Hello and welcome back to the course. My name is Piyush. This is day four in 30 days of AWS Terraform. In this video, we'll be looking into Terraform state file and remote backend. How does it work and why it is important? Okay, so let's go to our screen sharing and first let's understand how Terraform updates infrastructure. Okay, so it does that with the help of a file called .tf state or state file. Okay, what does it do? Okay, first let me show you when we ran the Terraform command, what file was created and how does it look like? Okay, so let's go back to our VS code over here. Okay, so over here in day three, when we ran the Terraform commands, Terraform apply specifically, it created a file called terraform.tf state. Like it doesn't have a lot of details, some metadata, but if you look at this file, terraform.tf state.backup, it will have a lot of details and specifically your confidential data, your secret and everything, right? If you scroll down, it will have your account ID and a lot of other details that you don't want to expose, right? So, but this file is important because this file is used to compare the infra and create the infra or make changes or destroy. And how does it do that? So when you run Terraform apply, as a DevOps engineer, you create some files, Terraform files, and on that files, you run Terraform apply. Now this Terraform apply command, it will compare your desired state with the actual state, okay? So let's understand two things. One is a desired state, the infra that you want to create. Let's say you want to have an S3 bucket, a VPC, an EC2 server. So that's your desired state. But what's your actual state? your actual state is none of these resources are created. So it will compare your desired state with the actual state. So there are three missing resources. Three resources are there in your configuration, but none of them are there in your environment, right? So it will create those three resources to match the desired state with the actual state. Okay, so that's three. Okay, so it will match your desired state with the actual state. Okay, my fingers are not visible, I believe. So this is your desired state. This is your actual state. So it will match your desired state with the actual state. Now let's say you delete one resource from your main.tf from here. Okay. So now you have two resources in your main.tf. So now it has to match your desired state with the actual state. So it will delete one resource from here as well. Now desired state will be equal to actual state. So that's how it works, right? That's how it compares the infrastructure. And this all information is stored in terraform.tf state file. Now, whenever you run the command, uh, you know, terraform file, it cannot just go and compare it with your actual infrastructure, right? So that means making a lot of API calls. So this particular arrow that I've just created, it cannot be done every time you run the terraform command. And plus it will need a lot of other mechanism to do that. So it does that with the help of this intermediate Terraform state file, which store all of these details. Now it is really important to store and keep this file a secret as a confidential data. It should not be exposed. It should not be in your local machine and it should not be on your server from where you are running your Terraform commands, right? So how do we store it? So then there is a concept called remote backend, okay? So we store this file, this state file remotely, let's say in an S3 bucket. So this is your S3 bucket and in, inside your S3 bucket, you are storing a state file as a remote backend. So instead of using that local backend, you are using a remote backend. So every time you run TF commands, like earlier, when you were running the TF commands from here, it was just checking that TF state file from here, from the same folder from where it was running. But now with the introduction of remote backend, every time you run the TF command, it will go and check your remote backend file, which is there in the S3 bucket, and it will compare it with your actual infra and make the changes. Right. And it can be stored in other cloud providers such as Azure Blob or GCP Cloud Storage. That's not GPC, it's GCP Cloud Storage. Okay. So this is the remote backend. And important point to remember is you need to store your state file to remote backend, which is what we did as an S3 bucket. And make sure you do not delete or update this file manually. Right. Otherwise, the file will be corrupted. And if it is deleted, your infrastructure will be lost. Like you will have your infrastructure, but now it is not managed by Terraform. So you have to do a lot of other things like you have to import it, 
which we'll do later on. We'll do that exercise as well, how to import the infrastructure and all. But for now, just understand these things, like make sure your file is secured. Make sure you don't really make any changes to the state file. Use state locking. State locking is a process in which you are telling Terraform that once the Terraform state file is used by a process, do not use it elsewhere. That means multiple users cannot execute Terraform plan on the same infrastructure at the same time, right? So that's why it will lock the Terraform state file. And once the command or process completes, only then it will release the lock so that it can be used by other process or other command. So that's state locking. Earlier, we used to use DynamoDB for the state locking mechanism, but it has been deprecated and S3 now has a feature itself inbuilt feature for state locking. So we'll use that and then make sure your state file are isolated uh, as per your environments or like as per your departments, whatever, like dev, test, prod, make sure you use separate state file for each of those, right? And make sure you perform regular backup of your state file, okay? So that in case the file is corrupted, in case the file is accidentally deleted or lost, you can just recover it from the backup. Okay, so that's some of the best practices of using Terraform state file or the remote backend. Now let's go ahead and let's configure the remote backend. Okay, so here is our VS code. We use Terraform a local uh, file earlier, right? So let's create a new folder, call it day 04. Okay, and I'm gonna copy the main.tf from the previous folder. And let's create main.tf over here. What am I doing? Okay, here, right? And let's copy it. Now let's add the backend details over here. You can create a new file and we'll, we're gonna do that later on, okay? But for now, just add the details over here. Now, what details to add? Let's go back to the documentation and you can search for uh, AWS S3 backend. You will redirect it to this document over here and over here, just copy the Terraform example configuration. So inside the Terraform block, so you cannot add it anywhere, Terraform block, you need to specify backend S3. So let's copy this first. Okay, and let's go back over here and inside Terraform block. Okay, so here's the Terraform block required provider. You can add it over here. Okay, so now you are configuring, you are telling Terraform to use backend as S3 bucket. And bucket name, uh, you need to create a bucket. So let's use tech tutorials with Piyush hyphen Terraform hyphen state. And then key is uh, like inside this bucket, you can have multiple folders for different environments, right? So let's call it uh, dev slash terraform.tf state, right? So there'll be a new folder created for dev, a separate folder for test and prod and whatever, right? So that's uh, how we are using it. Now let's see what alls do we have. Encrypt equal to true. That means you are encrypting the S3 uh, state file. Also, we need to use lock table. Okay. So this lock table is important. Otherwise, uh, what I've told you, like your infrastructure will suffer and uh, you won't be having this locking mechanism, which is really important because uh, multiple users will try to update the same infrastructure and uh, your state file will be corrupted. So that's why you need to use the locking mechanism. And this is what I've told you, like earlier, we used to use DynamoDB for this purpose. Now it is a built-in functionality within S3 bucket. So let's go back to the documentation and let's uh, have a look what it is. Actually, that part was not, I guess, uh, correct. So use lock file is the correct one. Okay, so let's go back over here in the VS code and instead of lock table, because we are not using DynamoDB. Okay, so let's remove this and, and add the option. What was it? Uh, I forgot that, wait, use lock file, okay. Use 
use log file is equal to true okay let's see if it has any other important thing that we need to add so these are the bucket uh, make sure you already have permissions to um, like all the required permission as three list bucket get put delete and all those things dynamo table permission we don't need it it's been deprecated and uh, yeah use log file and you can also add access keys as well but like again i told you you should not be adding it into any configuration so don't use that it's optional but do not use that okay and uh, do, 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 do. there are some uh, proxy variables that you can set we don't need that i think we have yeah i think this is good now let's go back over here okay so this is a terraform config now let's go am i in the correct folder no let's go inside day 04 folder and let's see what files do we have we have main.tf so let's run tf in it and it throw me some error okay no such bucket because that bucket should already be existed it's it's for the terraform state file so make sure it is created separately from your terraform config because that bucket has to be always available because it hosts your state file right so i'm just gonna create that manually not with the terraform so you can create it from your any aws cli script manually with the help of a cicd pipeline or from the console but do not keep that as part of your terraform resource it's not an s3 resource it should not be that okay let's go create bucket general purpose bucket name is this and let's keep everything as default block all public access we don't want that and hit create bucket okay bucket is created let's go back and i'm gonna run this command again terraform in it now it says initialize the backend and now it says successfully configured the backend as three. Terraform will automatically use this backend unless the backend configuration changes, right? So now it has used the backend as S3 and I will show you more things over there. And it has created a log file as well. Okay, so let's run TF plan. Okay, one plan to add. It will create a bucket right because this is part of the configuration it has to match the desired state with the actual state so that's what it's gonna do it will create the bucket and let's check this folder now you will see even if you run terraform apply you won't see any terraform file over here even if it is their state file it will be with some uh, like the basic metadata in fact let's run it Let's run terraform apply hyphen hyphen auto approve okay it should take maybe a few seconds and that should be it create it create it right so let's hit refresh over here you won't see anything terraform there is one file over here and if you go inside that file Right. it don't have a lot of details right it don't have any confidential data it just have the bucket name right that's it it doesn't have anything the actual terraform state file will be there over here if you hit refresh so this is the bucket that just got created test tf Piyush. and this is the bucket for terraform state file if you go inside that bucket you will see a folder because that's what we have used in the key the folder name is dev over there there is a terraform.tf state file so this is what just got created and this file will be used whenever we run any terraform command because this is what we have configured as the backend now if you want to see the content of this file so let me just what is this okay okay let me just download this file and let's open this file it's a json file right so now you see it has a lot of details now it's see it has everything right there are a lot of uh, encoded values and then there are a lot of values that you don't want to be part of terraform config right so yeah that's why it is important to have um, terraform 
bucket configured as remote backend and all the best practices that we have also seen. So yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure you destroy the resource once you are done. You can destroy your TF state file now if you want. But when we will be doing a project, when we'll be multiple times creating and deleting infrastructure, we're going to keep this Terraform state file safe and separate. Yeah, because we, we do not want to make a lot of changes with the Terraform state file. Now, there are some practice and there are some commands that you can uh, check it out. In fact, let me show you a, a simple command. So if you run uh, TF state show, okay. Now it says path to the state file. If it exists, oh, state list actually. Okay, it says AWS S3 dot first bucket. So your state file is there in this. Okay, so when I run Terraform state list, it shows that my state file has this particular resource, AWS S3 bucket. If you go over here in the day four folder, I have shared some commands that you can test it out and make sure you try this out. So list we have already run. Now you can also run Terraform state show and the resource name. It will show you more information. And then you can also remove the resource from the state file with this command. Do not manually update the state file, but you can run this command so that you can manage it without Terraform. Okay. And then you can pull the current state of the uh, state file, all those things, right? You can, you can try out these commands. Uh, and see what all these things are doing. And that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be looking into Terraform variables and a lot of other things. So that's it. Uh, I will see you soon. Make sure you complete the task given in the day four folder and do the submission. Make sure you understand how to do that and do it well. So all the best. Thank you so much. Happy learning. I will see you tomorrow.